Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you to WeLoveMetal.com, and I am very excited and honored to be talking to the legendary lead singer, vocalist, amazing metal man, Chuck Billy of Testament. How are you today, sir? I'm doing very well. Very well. Uh, like I told you, I'm getting prepared for a uh, first uh, snowstorm in the Bay Area in a long time. <laughs> Do they even have snow shovels down there? They don't even, no. <laughs> it's going to be a mess. Nobody has tires even prepared for it, so... <laughs> we uh, we just recently reviewed um, the re-release of, of Live at the Fillmore. Uh-huh. Um, amazing, and, and I'm sorry to say I'd actually forgotten all about it until the re-release and how amazing it was. Do, do you remember anything about that night? Um, well, yeah, I was, it was a special night. Always when you play the Fillmore, because uh, it's always the favorite venue to play home here in the Bay Area. Um, and also we brought out... Uh, some friends at the end to play songs. Star and Iaea came out and sang with us uh, three or four songs, and uh, yeah, it was a special night, definitely. Wonderful. And uh, in some exciting details, you're uh, have you finished mixing the new album, or is there any details on it yet? Uh, well, the new record we're still writing it. Um, I don't know what the plan, what the date is, but we'll, we should be in the studio hopefully in the next couple of months here. Um. Yeah, we're, we're, we're just fine-tuning on a bunch of songs right now. Alex is in town, actually. Matter of fact, he got in last night. And we'll be working with him for a week out here in California. And, uh, you know, hopefully by the time he leaves, we've you know, got a lot of a couple other tunes written. Are uh, you guys doing any of the uh, festival dates this year? Not this year. Um, our focus was to do a record, you know, really in 2010, but a lot of great touring opportunities came up. So, you know, the record kind of got put on the back burner. So it's about now it's like we're not going to go until we got to have it done, you know. Wonderful. We're definitely all looking forward to it. Um, the, the career in the history of Testament is so amazing, and you guys have been through so many personal issues and, and band-related issues. Do you feel these years later that you're stronger as a unit now? Well, we're definitely stronger as a unit right now, just just for the, the sheer fact that, you know, me and Eric have held this band together, you know, when the original lineup split up. And, um, you know, right now it's about as close as you can get. You know, if Louie was able to play, he'd probably be here with us. Um, you know, so I think it's as close as you can get right now. So right now we're feeling pretty good. And, you know, definitely when you have the guys who wrote the songs, you know, we we went through a lot of shows and years with these songs. So... You play them with a little more confidence, and, uh, you know, you get they only get better, <laughs> you know, after you do it a gazillion times. Now, obviously, the, the big talk this year is and last year was the, the big four, um, with, of course, the, the big four of thrash, they say. we A lot of us feel, and, and you'll see a big thing on the Internet about it always, about testament either being in that big four or it being a big five. Do you, do you feel there's a reason why it's not recognized as that? Uh, well, I mean, I, I would say because cause when you're talking big four of a style of music in an era, you know, back then, that, that's what we're talking about. And when those bands were coming out, yeah, they were all ahead of Testament, I believe, you know, as far as... Uh, gaining popularity and success, you know, selling more and more records, and and then right up to the point where the, the bottom kind of fell out when, <clears throat> you know, the whole Seattle thing kind of came in and kind of hurt everybody, but we were kind of right at that last man in line almost, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, so Testament kind of fell in a weird little, you know, thing. We are, we are almost right there with them all, and then, you know, the scene kind of changed. And, uh, you know, but over the years, we stuck through and prevailed and, and were determined to be testament and still always write testament music. And I, I believe we have our own style with Eric. But now having Alex back in and participating in some songwriting, it's really feeling like, you know, like the, the band, you know. So that, that's a good feeling. And, and I'll tell you, my personal opinion, too, is that you guys never, ever major sound for anyone but Testament fans. I don't think you ever went to that mainstream commercial that a lot of the other four did. Not that that's a bad thing or a knock against them, but 
Testament is oh, definitely yeah, testament. It, it just, it's just things that happen. And I, and I know it because we were at the Atlantic for 10 years at the beginning of our career. And we had a lot of people that, you know, deal with bands like Robert Plant, ACDC, and all this stuff. And here they're, you know, got testament. And they're, this is the 80s. And, you know, of course, they want radio stuff or video stuff. Or, and we were, you know, we were, they were pushing us in that way. And that's, you know, we were right on that edge of having a major like telling us what to do and and then when that kind of ended you know that's what kind of was really for the better you know i guess we kind of got to stay true because they were trying to bend us and we wanted to stick to what we were doing and uh you know in, in the end you know here we are where we're still getting enjoying it uh writing some good music still i believe and 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 enjoying the company of each other out there some writing and yeah i mean songs that we all got to create so that's cool and, and I said to you earlier, I, I wanted to touch a little bit, because I know you're, you're very proud of your First Nations heritage. And up in Canada, I'm not sure what it, what it is in the States. In Canada, we have many issues with First Nations people living in extreme poverty, um, high suicide rates. And I know this is a little deep, but I wonder if there's anything you could say out there to the youth um, in First Nations to, you know, that they can make it through this, that they can be successful. Well, you, it definitely can. I mean, everybody has a choice what they do in life. I think uh, when you're born and raised, and that's the lifestyle and the way you live it, I mean, you, you know, you have to, something has to change. You know, I mean, I, I just learned that just from my father, you know, and when he was raised on our reservation, you know, his father and parents wanted him out of it and get to school and education and, and make a better life. So that was always their plan. You know, so um, when my father got out of there and got went to school, he, of course, had his family and and uh, raised us the way he did in a suburbia almost. You know, we still have property on the reservation, but it was more of a, a vacation place, you know, and that, that's not where we were, were actually raised. So, uh, but that definitely wasn't being supported by, you know, federal help, that's for sure, because it was, you know, like a lot of reservations I see, you know, a lot of uh, debris and vehicles and, uh, you know, that the roads weren't kept up and school buses weren't even available for kids to get to school and just, you know, everything was for themselves and, you know, definitely came a long way since I've seen that, since I've grown up, you know, uh, we still, like I said, we still have property up there and I think around 10 years, maybe or so, they built a casino, and it's a small reservation, so it supported a lot of the people that live there, which was good. And now, you know, the roads and the community and the cleanup and and uh, school buses and everything is up and going, and and it's it's a good thing, you know. Uh, but you know, on the other hand, it was good for a while until it got too good, and then now. The government, of course, wants to come in and federal tax them and do the whole deal and, you know, and get their share now. It's like, you know, it's almost upsetting because for years nothing happened and then, you know, when something finally makes good for yourself, now they pay attention and, you know. So, you know, we still have to have our own police force for a whole bit, you know. Definitely. It's good to hear you say that because if more people spoke out, I, I think they might actually step up and do something because... Some of the conditions are just, you know, it, it's hard for these kids to look out and see that there is a future there when they have to live through that every day, so. But stuff, and like I said, it's the way you're kind of raised, and it's, it's um, someone having to have a, a hope or vision that, like, say, hey, let's change it, or, or you know, make, try to make better. So, you know, it's tough, you know, and I have, I have cousins and stuff on our tribal council, and they've asked me to come on in and and talk to the kids there and, and, and plan like a workshop and have me come in and speak to them and stuff. So I'm planning some of that stuff this summer to do that, you know, because it can't hurt. And he's like, you know, he asked me, it's like, you know, they just, they would, they would dig it, Chuck. And I'm like, right on. So, you know, if you're asking, I'll do it. So Definitely. What, uh, what was your experience like? You were just uh, up here actually in Nova Scotia with uh, Megadeth and Slayer for the Carnage Tour. What was your experience like in Halifax in the area? Uh, Halifax is awesome. That was uh, our first time up there, and it's beautiful getting up there. Uh, the drive, uh, I, I just love going across 
you know, up north across there. It's just beautiful. And uh, first time there is awesome. You know, I mean, I think uh, I, was that. I can't remember if that was the that was the last show I believe before yes, I went back was. into the U.S. Yeah. So uh, it was pretty awesome. I remember we got the nice wall of death going up there, and uh, it was uh, a, a, a smaller venue, but it was awesome. The crowd was ready for it. That's for sure. Yeah, we don't get a lot of big acts like you guys, so I, I know they showed their support for you. That was for sure. That was awesome. It was that, that was definitely a memorable. I, I got video. I think I videoed that night. So <laughs> since uh, since you're one of the the founders, in, in my opinion, of of the genre of music you play, who did you look to for influence, Chuck, when you were younger and coming up? Um. Well, how young? <laughs> well, uh, in your teens. But I, was this you know. I've been in Testament or before that? Before that. Well, before that, you know, um, it was definitely a different style. I was more, because uh, I was raised up back with, like, bands like Thin Lizzy and UFO and Old Scorpion, you know, and bands like that. So as I grew up, I was into more guitar-orientated heavier rock, you know, and um, that's kind of, a, like, they still in this that, like, if I'm still going to put on record, I seem to go back to that catalog and pop that kind of stuff in, you know, it just takes me back to, uh, you know, when I was young and having fun and just good times, and it takes me back to a place I remember at a time with a song or whatever, and to me, that's what kind of music's about, you know, so those old songs for me and records, that's what those do for me, so uh, I was raised with that. So those influences for me was more about melody. Mm -hmm. um, so when I kind of got into the band Testament, when I was first Legacy, I came into the band, like, you know, coming out of college, taking vocal lessons and, and trying to be a more melodic style of singer. And when I got into Legacy, it was melodic, but it was more rapid fire attack with the drums kind of vocals, mm -hmm. more great for shooting vocals and to me that was different for me and it was I was something I wasn't kind of like well and kind of wasn't used to so when I came into the band you know I heard it as I could do both I could rapid fire but I can also hit a little some melody with it so I kind of took what we were doing at that time and, and did a little bit of what I've learned and what they have taught me and put it together and that's what I've kind of developed over the years with the band and I think that's what gave me my own and kept me focused on what I do as a singer with thrash metal. You know, I try not to sing straight ahead just with a thrashing beat and sing straight forward. I just try to find a pocket and a melody and a, a hook, you know. Well, my I think what makes me, that's what put me in different from these guys because when these guys were younger than I they were more into early Merciful Fate and Metallica and, you know, the earlier stuff like that that were, they were brought up on. So, but of course, you know, with the other bands as well, but, you know, that's what they were about when they came up writing. It, it amazes me that uh, the, the new fad in metal right now is guys mixing their uh, clean vocals with a, a more of a deeper growl, and they're calling that a new thing, and I think you've been doing that for the last 20 years, haven't you? Uh, well, it's, it's different flavors. I mean, it's always good. I mean, mel I like melody. If someone's got a good hook, it's a good hook, you know I mean? Uh, doing it just for the sake of doing it, I mean, that's, that's different. You know, I mean, a whole record that didn't, would probably get to me after a while just hearing the same thing if it was, you know. Um, I don't know. I mean, you know, I think all music, any new music is good for battle. Well, Chuck, I'd like to thank you for doing this and tell you what an honor it's been to speak with you. You've been, uh, on a personal note, a personal hero of mine, and I, I certainly appreciate this. Take care. Take care, and we'll see you again next time. All right, man.